Welcome to the Family Guide podcast presented by Movie Guide. I'm Jeremy Carroll here with Movie Guide CEO Robbie Bear. And today we're going to be talking about using discernment when looking at AI and all these new technologies coming out and how to protect your kids. So stick around. I, I think the idea of this humane AI pin, okay, it started by a husband and wife couple. Uh, they both worked at Apple for a long time, you know, over a decade, I think, both of them. One was in the design team and one was on the software team at Apple. Okay, so I think the, the his wife ended up running like... Did they meet at Apple? Is yeah, they, I think they met That's there cool. and they. I think she ran like the iOS software or something, something yeah. really big. And he did a lot of the design stuff. Now, the thing is that they, um, you know, are married. They they left and they started this thing called Humane. Uh-huh. They have a lot of Apple employees there. Uh-huh. Out of their 200 employees, I think it's like 90 or something. I don't know if I was reading that accurately. Wow. Like Apple employees. So they have wow. a lot of them. But the thing is that basically they've launched this new thing called the AI pin. Yeah. It's something you put like a little pin. It's like Star Trek. You put it on your, your clothing yeah. Okay, you press it and you can like talk to it at any time about anything. And it has a little camera on it and all that sort of stuff. And so you can say, hey, like, let's say you're holding an, an apple or something. You could say, how much sugar is in this apple? And it would say, it scans there the are apple. six grams right. of sugar in the apple or whatever. They, you know, they kind of show it's that with cool. like food on the demo. Yeah. Um, it's like the size of a silver dollar. Kind yeah. Of, and yeah. you can say, and you can tell it to take a picture mm-hmm. um, or anything like that. Um, and so you're basically talking to it. You can tell it to text people for you. You can Mm -hmm. tell it. It's basically like having like Siri on steroids without opening your phone every time to get to it. Right. Right. It's literally, um, it's actually chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's literally just that. That's what they use in the background. And Mm -hmm. I guess the guy who runs chat now, now I know chat because I'm reading the biography of Elon Musk. (laughs) I know it was started by him. Right, um, right, that's right. But OpenAI was started by him, and then there he wanted it to be open, and then Sam Altman or something took it over. So hmm. now um, Sam Altman is the guy who's in charge, okay, and they kicked Elon out or whatever. The thing is that um, he's a big investor in this company, Humane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's, it's basically like I, I think the thing that's interesting about it is there's kind of two different visions of the world that continue to, like, diverge, Yeah. okay? Vision one is like Apple doing their next product called the Vision Pro. Speaking of vision, <laughs> and it's where you wear these huge glass like goggles that it's, cover up your eyes and yeah. just like a screen in front of you at all times. Now yeah, it's extremely yeah. immersive. It's supposed to be magical, amazing experience, but it's like you breaking you from reality. So okay. it's literally the opposite. And literally the opposite. Like the opposite is like you are surrounded by screens, living in a screen world. Right, okay. Right. On the other side, um, you have something like this humane stuff yeah. where it's like you have no screen. Okay. Yeah. For the, the way that they see the world is you just, it's called ambient computing. Okay. So like, it's just the computer is there, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you can't, it's not like you necessarily like recognize it in, in, in your right. world. Like when right. you need it, you talk to it. When you don't, you don't. Yes. Yeah. I think that the thing is, I think that there's a couple of cool things about it. Like, I would love to look at screens less. Yeah, right? totally. The hardship is, I don't know if I <laughs> will putting do that, that. in practice. <laughs> it's like one of those things where, like, everybody yeah, wants great. to lose weight every yeah, yeah, year, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like you, <laughs> or like get ripped yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to get jacked. But, yeah, but I don't want to be hours in the gym. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So the thing is that. It'd be nice to look at screens less. Yes. Okay. This makes it so you can't look at screens at all because there is no screen. Uh-huh. Okay. That's an interesting point. Yeah. I think that it is hard to see if people will remove screens. Number two, oh, it comes with a cell phone service. So it's 24 bucks a month and it's all cell phone service you need. Hmm. So it comes with a phone number, everything. You don't need a, a smartphone or anything with it. So it gotcha. comes with a yeah. cell phone service. The second thing I wonder is... Um. The AI, like you yeah. and I had talked about yeah. this, like, like, do you trust what it says for you right. or your family or anything like that? And mm-hmm. the reason why I think this is interesting is AI is trained, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's trained through lots of different information. 
if any of you have heard anything about AI recently, then you know it's called, you'll probably hear the term LLM, which means large yeah. language model. And basically, like the innovation that happened is that people found out that um, beforehand they were like trying these different algorithms to solve different problems, like solve voice so that you could do like when you talk to your computer, it would type for you or solve pictures that it could recognize pictures. And they were having a really hard time and they were all working on these separate things. Then what happened was the people realized like, hey, everything in our world is around language. And if yeah. you think about it in the Bible, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word, yeah. right? And so John 1.1, 1, 1. We, we believe in the power of language. And basically what they said is like, hey, everything is actually language. And so it was actually this discovery that changed everything. So they changed the picture to being language. They changed the the everything into language, okay? Mm -hmm. And these AI models have just kind of taken off. Now, what they need is they need a lot of information to learn mm -hmm. it. The problem is that right now, like primarily the way that they've learned information is, wow, they scoured social media. <laughs> Which do you really <laughs> want? <source. laughs> like, do you really want AI that's like scoured social media? Like yeah. they've scoured Reddit, you know what yeah. I mean? Like they've pulled like the web in or whatever, you right, know, and right, ingested right. a lot of the web, okay? Uh, not like the block sources, like Wall Street Journal, but like the other ones, they've just ripped them. <laughs> and the thing is that like, it's I, I, the way I think of it is like, you've trained worldview for this AI uh -huh. on something. And, and most of these, like the, most of the worldview of these organizations are, are antithetical to the majority mm -hmm. of Americans and probably the majority of, of the world. Right. You know totally. what I mean? Um, like they've trained these on junk food. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And so there, of course you get like, ran, you get beautiful, cool answers and you get really weird answers too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like a total yeah. like miss on it. And yeah. they call it, in AI, they call it hallucination. And they don't. We would call it lying, <laughs> but they call it hallucination, where we'll just make something up. Right. 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 And so the thing is that because it's intent, like they claim it's not intending to lie. We don't know, but it's it not intending to lie. Making it just it makes up. Without, up. So yeah. I think that it's because of the junk food that they're given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it can it can kind of spit out anything. That's why sometimes it spits out horrible things, like oh, how to make some horrible thing or hurt people or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and and so I don't know. You know my own pet peeve is I think Christians should make their own totally. large language model. There's so much great, There's great, plenty of Christian <laughs> great content Christian to show works and these. information of all of human history. Yep. And like even for like the most modern AI models that they use for translation, I read about the one that Meta uses, which is formerly Facebook. Like they base it off of off of uh, biblical translation Amazing. because the biblical Ooh. translation has so much material on translating yeah. languages like and that all they use it as like a value. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, they, they used like some of it. They said something about like uh, faith texts or whatever. And I just think that like, it'd be great if Christians did this, but mm -hmm. since right now Christians are not involved, if you are working in that field, please make, make a Christian LLM. Um, but because they're not like, do you trust, mm -hmm. um, what's being done right. and so like when you're walking around like it, you have to put a lot of trust in what what that is right because it's presenting the world through its worldview right. not your biblical worldview <laughs> and then the other question is do you want a device that's like a pin on your shirt <laughs> do you know what i mean the appeal is cool like to be fully still be connected but still fully involved in the world around you without being swallowed by a screen but at the same time it's like are you going to be tapping and talking to this little pendant on your chest right. all the time yeah. and like it's constantly learning what you're doing where yeah. you're going yeah. and yeah, yeah. it's using that chat gbt model yeah. like yeah. It, it, there's a lot of flags that yeah. go up with something like this yeah um and that's a big thing with like apple on your yeah. phone it's all done on device it's supposed to be more private more right. secure right which is a big appeal for especially nowadays with right. stuff I don't know. It's it's a weird. It's a tough sell. I feel like for it a is lot interesting of stuff. about like the talking to the device. Yeah, you know, because like you press yeah. it and it can catch you up on messages or other things. And yeah, and now too, like uh, GPS and stuff. It's like okay, great, you can ask it directions, but it's gonna be talking in your ear the whole time. Yeah, you're trying it's gonna to be get like somewhere. turn left, turn left, <laughs> turn here. But then who knows if it's hallucinating, and then right. you're going in circles trying to get. It's somewhere. like but, you're you turn know. left. You're wrong. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that like both you and I have like a wa Apple watch or whatever. And it's like yeah. the Apple watch is a great platform. Like it, I think the watch is like the right place to have it. Yeah. I feel I it feels natural. Like I feel good having mm -hmm. it on my, 
on my wrist. Like mm-hmm. I'm happy to talk to it in that yeah. way, you know? Um, but I just don't know if I want to be talking to like a pin on my shirt the whole yeah. time. Kind of the Star Trek way. It's really like a Star Trek thing, but it's like, I don't yeah. know. I don't know or not if I'd want to do that. And then you brought up a great point about like, it'd be awkward if you like ask it like, what did you say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Starts reading private text messages out loud while you're yeah. sitting across from the person you were talking to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it could be it could be doing gossip in real time in right. a little bit, you know? Like, I mean, you shouldn't gossip, weird. period, but it would be no. kind of funny if it's like, I just heard Janie yeah. has the worst, <laughs> you know, whatever or something. Yeah. Yeah. So Also, the, the watch and stuff is great for making payments, like if you're at the store or something. Yeah. You might be to lean all the way over the cashier to make a payment. Right. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> that would no be, uh, i think it's an interesting exercise um i don't know if it'll catch on 100 percent. there'll be diehards that want to rock it all the time the problem is that it has I don't to think it'll go mainstream. Uh, it has to make enough mainstream for them to make more yeah do you know what yeah. I mean? and the question is if they will make more and i, I really know. really think that they should have started with the world with a watch but mm. i know that their point was that oh people need cameras Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, like, they like the fact that, like, you could take a picture, kind of like. Well, I, I, I do feel like that's a big, because my wife and I take thousands of photos all the time. We're constantly taking photos. So it would be awesome to untether from the phone if you could use your watch to take photos. I don't know how that would be packaged you could. properly. Like they, they have a, a watch band for the a- Apple Watch that you can take pictures. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, <laughs> so, like, they could have just done that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I so I I do think that like it is important with any of these things to like be careful about, um, like what is being said. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I do think that like we're at an interesting time of society where like people are going both right, ways. Like right. some people are delving more into screens, and some people yeah. are like, "Hey, I just want less of it." I you do know think I mean? it's super telling that this whole like tech sector is coming to light now. After everything, everyone's been so connected, so right. into screens, right, 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 surrounded by screens, and now, like you said, it's two different factions going off from this. So I think the pandemic did it. Yeah, yeah. Where it was just like it, it was like we were so so only screens. Yeah. That people were like, hey, we don't want this anymore. Yeah. Like, we want to live life. We want to like smell the flowers and feel the grass and <laughs> see, be outside and like yeah, see Zoom. people and so. I I think that the pandemic just said, hey, it's too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not even good for like human. I mean, look at the spike in mental like issues and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of that is just like people delved into their phones instead of like being with people. You know, I think I think it kind of exposed the lie of like social media is socializing, but it's not. Yeah. It really isn't connecting people the way they sell it. You know, do you know one other thing I want to say on the ambient computing thing that I think is interesting is so I was at a event and I won a Amazon Alexa show. Yeah. Okay. And so we didn't really we didn't have any of those before. And the thing is that Alexa is so good. It's like way better than Surrey. Yeah. Okay. And if you're listening to this on any of those devices <laughs> out loud, we're sorry. sorry. It's a uh, but it's like just so much better. Mm-hmm. Like it can do so much more. <laughs> But again, the same thing of like, well, I have my little kids there and it's like, well, do you trust necessarily like what like is responded? And because it's a show device, like I noticed um, like there are times where my kids have just like pressed on the button accidentally and Mm. it's done something weird. Like it showed a uh, clip of some movie or something. Mm. Now, it was like some movie coming out, you know, that it was scrolling through like the Amazon ads that they have because, you know, they put ads on those little things and it's like oh man like that is scary for yeah. my family now i understand like the audio only one like removes a lot of that sort yeah. of stuff but yeah. like also there was that big issue that the bbc focused on or something i think where like it was telling kids explicit information <sighs> yeah. or whatever and so it's like you're just inviting another thing into your home yeah, and yeah, the question yeah. is like how do you do it well and it's interesting because when they look at rate like consumer trust it's like yeah people trust apple devices pretty highly you know what mm-hmm. i mean and and there's some reason that they've built credibility on that you know they are obsessed with privacy they don't even keep keep your information you yeah. know what i mean so they don't know if you talked to surrey yourself you know what i mean they yeah. do this whole obfuscation thing so they don't know it, pr- it does as much on devices as they can yeah so that makes sense but and that's true for the home pod or the or the thing but it's so bad and so <laughs> dumb and so incapable good. you know what yeah. i mean but then you have these things like alexa and you have you have Google Home yeah. and like they're both like very capable devices, but it's like 
you're inviting something else into your home. Yeah. And if you have little people, I wonder how to walk that. You know what I mean? Because on one side, like it's actually right. like a beautiful experience. And the second thing is like, I could see if we just had the audio versions of it, like it would actually like make you less reliant on your phone. Because yeah. sometimes when, when like my kids are like, oh, they ask us some question about some ancient like historical yeah, thing yeah. or whatever, or ask us some biblical question. We're just like, oh, well, why don't we type this on our phone? But like what I found with the Alexas, I just say, hey, you know, tell me, tell me about this. And then it, like, like my son was obsessed with like swords, like what the strongest sword is or whatever. And so yeah. we ask about like, hey, how do you make, and it talks you through all of it, you know, like titanium or this or that or this, which I found out that titanium <laughs> are not great swords, actually. Interesting. They're very brittle, <laughs> I guess, or something. Yeah. Um, but like it made it so that we were less involved in yeah. our thing and we were just more together. So back to that AI pin thing, we were more together. But the thing is that you're inviting something else into your home. Yeah. And the thing you're inviting, you do not know like yeah. what it's going to say. And uh, I think it's particularly weird with with the screens, yeah. screen on it and the weird ads. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wonder I wonder what you thought about that stuff. I don't know. It's interesting because you do have some of those. I think you have every platform basically. Yeah, we have. Well, mostly because your parents or your mom who was you know vision impaired, they were very helpful. Like she could actually follow um, like recipes and stuff like that because she couldn't read the recipe books and stuff. But it would talk her through how to how to bake something or stuff, which was really cool. Like that, that's when it kind of clicks. Is like when you're it, it's helping you do something in the real world without having to be totally attached to it, right? Yeah, it's kind of your your little helper in the corner, right? Right. Um, it does get weird when it starts listening. And yeah. randomly in the corner of the room, you see it light up. I mean, it's, it's listening, listening at all times. Yeah. Is it's, what they said. They're always listening for the wake wound. That's you the know? thing is there's a double edged sword, not titanium. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what some, some company kind of like Apple or something, if they can make it totally private on device and it works well, <laughs> then they're onto something because having Siri to be as smart as an Alexa or Google would be fantastic. It'd be amazing. It'd be um, game changing, but I do feel like that's a ways away, or it's, it's just technically difficult, you know. But it'd be great to have a Christian one too. Yes, you know what I mean. Yes. One that you just knew, yeah, was going to respond with like biblical, like good responses. Yeah, I, I, that was another thing we were talking about is siloing. So people getting kind of sucked into their own political, whatever worldviews, everything. They're going to be siloed even more now. Um, I don't know if you want to open up on that a little more too. Oh but, yeah. Cause we were talking about how, so one of the yeah. things that they say is like interesting about AI is obviously like it's doing some transformative things in the world. Yeah. Okay. It's everybody's seen kind of like the, Oh, write me a poem or write me a song or whatever. And it's like, Oh, this is cool. But like it, it's able to do amazing, amazing stuff, help from contracts to, to healthcare to all sorts of things in between. Mm. And I think that like one of the things that I think is is kind of interesting is I got to um, watch an interview with with uh, two a debate actually between two mm. people and one was one of the guys who was one of the founders of DeepMind. Okay, mm -hmm. so the basically there's only like a few companies in the world that are experts in this field. Yeah. Okay, and these guys are one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he was one of the founders and now he's left and he's making this new company called inference AI, which is trying to make like your best friend. That's AI. Okay. So no human being uh, best friend, just an AI best friend. And mm -hmm. he thinks in five years, everyone's best friend is going to be an AI, not a person, which I think is, <laughs> sounds like a very depressing, like horrible, like depressing yeah, world. Not everybody but he thinks a lot of people will, well, their best friend will just be an AI, which I think sounds horrible, no, like a horrible thing. But you know, he's at the forefront. And then on the other side, he was debating uh, the guy who's like a historian and he, he wrote the book called H Sapien. I have not read the book, so I don't know if it's horrible or not. So I have no recommendation on that. But it was pretty interesting because he was like saying like he felt like kind of a little more of the dystopian effects. Mm -hmm. Like I do think there'll be a lot of positive effects, but his kind of things on the dystopian effects are one is it, and the funny thing about this is I felt like even though he was painting a dystopian as it might, who knows, be a positive. But what he was mm. saying is that, like, it's going to be really hard for things to be national anymore. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, what happened was that for most of human history, things were extremely localized. Mm -hmm. You knew your mm -hmm. local community. You knew yeah. the local things around you. Okay? Then with the invention of radio and TV, 
things became nationalized. Mm. You could speak with one voice. Everybody heard, and there was like a common zeitgeist, as they say. It was a common like um, view of like society that we all um, kind of heard and understood, and yeah. and and like people wore similar trends, all that sort of stuff, right? Right. Like the problem that AI has done is because information is can be so prolific and so fake. Yeah. The thing is that people don't trust a lot of news sources anymore. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. not trusting it very much anymore. And so on that on that flip side is um, because of the lack of trust, they think he thinks like, hey, either the world is going to kind of move to like totalitarian ships where they use it for evil or bad or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of governments you could probably think in your head now about doing that. Right. Or on the flip side is like the big like republics, democracies of the world will, won't be able to really last, and yeah. everything was gonna is gonna have to go local because of the fact that like uh, you're not gonna trust stuff outside of like oh hey I can walk up and talk to my legislator right which right. is in a way like that's how America was originally yeah like totally. you could talk to your your legislator you could walk to talk to the person who was actually governing you it wasn't someone like that was the whole revolution was that, hey, you didn't want someone 4,000 miles away right. telling you exactly what to do because they don't know right. you locally. Now, yeah. like, um, obviously it's different. Now most people are governed by people thousands of miles away. Look at Europe with yeah. you. Look at us in America. Like most That's democracies Brexit. or republics are like literally thousands of miles away. Someone's ruling them and telling them mm -hmm. what to do, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's interesting on, on that about like, the element of trust, mm -hmm. which I think does make a lot of sense because like the quality of like deep fakes, which a deep fake yeah, is a video one. where it replicates somebody. It looks extremely real and you cannot tell the difference. Okay. Yeah. It could be a video or there's audio deep fakes where they can take your voice and rip you off and replicate yeah. you. And it's very hard to tell the difference. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things like that or like just tons of content that can be produced quickly and fakely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even know that's a word. Artificially, yeah, tell me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> quickly and artificially, you know, and so the 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 question is yeah. like, will that change the nature of like kind of the the world as we see it? Will it move to a world where it's like, um, very much like it becomes localized again? You know what I mean? Because it's just right. like because people want that tangible right. interaction with the real like you, person, real person that real you things. know that you can talk with, that you can walk with. Right. You know what I mean? And that might even break down communication. Like my brother lives in another continent. You know what I mean? But it's like okay, well, you don't know reliably about communication mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. on these kind of things. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever. Like as that progresses, I don't know. I I thought that that was like a very it's fascinating thing. He thought it was quite dystopian. You know, future. <laughs> And, like, I do see, like, some of the horrors of what he's talking about. But on the flip side, like, who knows? The the yeah. benefit we as Christians have is we know God is in charge. Absolutely. You know, from the beginning to the right. end. You right. know? It's true. And he's victorious. It's <laughs> going to be a interesting future, for sure. Yeah. This AI is bringing a lot of new dynamics to <laughs> society as a whole with media, technology, everything. So. Well, the thing about AI is, like, it's a real spark plug because, yeah. I mean, look at those two strikes in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like, both of them had to deal with the fact that, like, AI. Yeah. The writer's strike and the actor's strike. Now, they yeah. all both have staved it off for three years. But the thing is that, like, that's still very prescient. Totally. Like, what the issue at hand totally. is. You know? Um, so, I do think it's, like, an issue of our times. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Now, if you are a parent with little people or big people, <laughs> anyone in the age spectrum, you've probably heard some things about the, about AI. And I think that as a parent, like there's some important things to, to, to consider and to be concerned mm -hmm. about. We talked about Alexa. We talked about Google, which I know any of you have that and are listening on a device <laughs> or annoyed right now. We talked about, sorry, we talked about all those, those things, yeah. those key active words. Um, and like how how you have to be concerned that hey as a parent like this is another thing in the home right. that can affect you totally now on the flip side like how is your kid using AI what do you need to be concerned about and then are there good things about it I think ways in which your child might be using AI that you can look for and maybe you don't know are through some mm -hmm. of the basic tools that people are using a lot nowadays mm -hmm. okay so one of them would be image generation. There was a big story that came out recently about boys in a school who yeah. 
um, they were in junior high or something, or maybe maybe almost high school, and they were passing around like nude photos of girls in the school that they had made through AI image generation. Okay, mm-hmm. which is a horrible, horrible right. thing, and it it was terrible. If you're you use any sort of router, you can track and put safety controls for your kid on what they're looking at. Mm-hmm. Okay, it can be any of the major routers: TP-Link, Netgear, Linksys. Any one of them has a set of um, security controls, and we're gonna do a video on mm-hmm. some of those that you can kind of learn through that. But you can kind of look through like, hey, what is your kid's device looking at? Okay, our kids are too young to have devices. But if your kids have devices, you can actually see what they're looking at. If they're looking at something called mid-journey, okay? <laughs> if you've ever heard of something called mid-journey, mm-hmm. mid-journey is an image, is basically a text-to-image. So you can text-to-image something and it can make any anything you talk about. It can mm-hmm. make Mario, you know, fighting... Um, the president it could do anything you want want to be able to put in there they'll create it from text to image mm-hmm. okay now on the flip side is it can like text image bad content mm-hmm. too you know what i mean so i think that's something important to to look at um i think that dolly 3 is like another one, big one that you can just get through chat chat gpt mm-hmm. um it lets you do text to, to image generating Chat GPT is another thing. If you look at your kids using that a lot, they're probably using that. Maybe maybe they use it for good, or you can see if they're using it for answering all their homework. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, so be careful about that. There's a lot of these. Uh, uh, luckily, a lot of the new ones um, come with a term of, like, AI in it or whatever. So you might be able to – like, if you saw Leonardo AI, then you know, oh, yes, they're making, um, like – yeah you know it text images now the thing about um you know people are moving a lot mid journey doesn't have that in there so you might not know and so it's good to know that um another one is called stable diffusion is mm-hmm. an open source model and it lets you uh, create any content now a lot of the big companies have like protection against sketchy right. stuff so like yeah. if your kids Don't are using canva away. you yeah. know like they try to protect against illicit content mm-hmm same thing with um you know firefly or whatever which is done by adobe mm-hmm. it also tries to protect i think against illicit com- mm-hmm. content be careful yeah with what you're, you know yeah. like wouldn't you say the same thing like just yeah, be totally. careful you don't know what your kids might be using but just be careful be informed about it um you know we're gonna have kind of an article on all the di- uh, the different big ais that you can kind of know as a parent yeah uh, just to be able to be informed about it know about like the, this is what each of these are, you know? Yeah, and I feel like this is the new Wild West in a way. Um, just for parents, it's kind of like another minefield of technology versus their kids. So it's like, I think we'll have like a good kind of cheat sheet that breaks down every single one and kind of gets everyone oriented on it because this is a major thing. It's going to be a big thing in the future and kids are going to be like growing up with this stuff. Um, and parents, it's all brand new. So I think it's... It's kind of like the new wave of <laughs> stuff you got to learn and interpret properly. So. Yeah. And the thing is that, too, like, it just means that it's really important to teach kids discernment. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a book called The Media Wise Family um, that we printed many years ago, and we have a new version of that up now. That you can go to Amazon and get The Media Wise Family. Um, and just really, like, take through, like, kids need discernment more yeah. now than ever to be able to learn about the stuff that's coming in because it is, it's just way more intense than, yeah. than other generations. You know what I mean? About like the sophistication, like yep. the targeting. And, and so it's best that you try to obviously put as many tools as you can to protect yourself on it, but also to be able to, um, you know, just be informed about it and help train your kids how to be yeah. informed about it and be totally. safe about it to know that like, Hey, these models have eaten a lot of junk food. Yeah. And that means that they're going to spit out some weird, weird, weird stuff. Yeah. Like they, yeah. they like the biggest thing in AI now is called constitutional AI is one of the big thoughts. And, and what we would just say in the faith community is called worldview. Mm-hmm. So they're giving these AI worldview. Now their mm-hmm. worldview is not the same as our worldview. And so the things that it spits out, you just have to know that, you know, right. and, right. um, until some Christian makes an AI, <laughs> um, Get on it. so just, um, <laughs> I think it is important for a parent just to be yeah. careful to understand 
to be aware and to be knowledgeable about it. You yeah. know? Thanks so much for listening to the Family Guide Podcast. I'm Robbie Bear. And I'm Jeremy. And we love getting to talk to you every week and just want you to know that you can subscribe below. Click the notification bell to be able to know when the newest ones come out. And please fill out in the comments below telling us what you'd love us to chat about. If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.